Tonight, as part of our weekly Innocence Project series, we tell you about a man who was wrongfully convicted, exonerated, and used what he experienced to help others. This is the story of Raymond Toller. In 1981, Raymond Toller was charged with the rape, assault, and kidnapping of an 11-year-old girl and her 12-year-old male cousin in Cleveland, Ohio. The victims at least uh, two witnesses identified Raymond as the perpetrator and testified at his trial. But the only physical evidence used against Raymond was hair taken from the white female victim, which, forensic, which a forensic analyst described as Negro hair. Raymond denied committing the crime, saying he was at home at the time they were committed, but several witnesses corroborated, several witnesses corroborated his story, but the jury still convicted Raymond, and he was sentenced to life in prison. After serving more than 20 years, a new law made it possible to request DNA testing. With the help of the Ohio Innocence Project, that DNA test cleared Raymond and led to his release from prison in 2010. But his story didn't end there. Raymond Toller joins us now from Cincinnati, Ohio. It is an honor to have you on the show, Raymond. Welcome. Uh, it's good to be here from uh, Sheffield Lake, Ohio, up north, but that's okay because ah, I love the you. Innocent Project, thank which you. is in Cincinnati, a place that's a wonderful uh, beam of light in the world that helps you know get innocent people out of jail. No worries. <laughs> Well, speaking of innocent people uh, in jail, you were one of them. Um, what kept you going yeah. through almost three decades in prison for a crime you didn't commit? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because my girlfriend Kelly is uh, right here. She tells a story how she uh, seen me speaking of how I held on to my hope. And, and I don't know how, but I just did, you know, maybe it's from my uh, upbringing, you know, from church and, you know, knowing how to uh, put things in God's hands, which I, I, I kind of had to do because I couldn't get myself out of prison. That's why I stayed in there almost 30 years. But with the help of the uh, good people, I like the people at the Innocent Project down in Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati University, uh, they really started the spark uh, along with the uh, New York Innocent Project. You know, those those folks are all around the world right now, uh, uh, helping people like myself back then and helping people today. You know, it was 11 years mm -hmm. ago when I was out free, uh, thanks to the OIP. But they're still walking guys out free. <laughs> You know, Isaiah, you had him on your show, uh, I was told, uh, not too long ago. Yes. You know, that's the one of the newest uh, exonerees uh, from Ohio, you know, thanks to these folks also. I could go on and go, well, Raymond, go on about it. But I don't want to get too much time. No, Ra Raymond, what, well, tell me about that moment when you, when you learned you were about to walk out of prison a free man. Uh, well, it was a really long process. It was actually six, a six-year process from when I mm -hmm. um, registered to have my DNA tested from till the day I actually walked out. And I had the DNA. When I got the DNA, finally, um, then it took another year and a half to, to get a judge to actually say, okay, we believe in DNA, and this man is, is, is innocent you know, along with all the other evidence that I had, you know, in my, you know, in my favor. Now I have DNA. I, what what else do I need? So the judge mm -hmm. finally seen me. And to answer your question, it was one of the best feelings in the world. It just took a really long time for it to really manifest. And, and to be truthful, just these last couple months, I've really been feeling it because now I, I kind of feel like I'm leading my life as I would have or could have yes. if I hadn't gone to jail. You know, all the stuff that I couldn't do, I'm doing now. You know, so, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, Raymond. Since you were released, you okay. spent the past 10 years helping others in Northeast Ohio by providing a safe house 
to those who have been wrongfully convicted and exonerated. Tell us about your Freedom House project and, and what inspired you to create it. Uh, I was, oh, there's a house. That's nice. I was really inspired, um, I guess, from when I came home. Uh, I had a, a friend, Carol Briney, she opened her house to me. And, you know, as my brother did also, you know, the very first free bed that I slept on for after 30 years of being incarcerated, it was from my family. You know, but then after being home and seeing other guys come out, not everyone had that family or, or a very good friend that could uh, do that. You know, or they would get into a situation where their family was not the place that they should go to. You know, that happens mm -hmm. too. You've been estranged from your family for so long, then your family goes off into a life way different than yours. And maybe that same life that you were living that got you into jail. Even though you're innocent, it can, you know, that, that world can still pull you in. So when you want to get out, you want to be away from all that stuff. You know. Some of your best friends you might have to stay away from just because of, of that world. Because, you know, when you go in, you're, you're scared straight. You're scared straight er, because you're going, you're going in innocent, but you still really do not want to go back in. And it's a, it's a good feeling to go somewhere, like you said at the open of the show, a safe house. It can be many things, yeah. but that's, it's good that, that it is that now, it's, it's proven to be sustainable in itself and to, to be a, a, a good place for Charles and Isaiah right now. And uh, uh, one, <laughs> well, wait a minute. one of the yeah. men living in your um, Freedom House is a man named Isaiah who was wrongfully convicted and spent more than 47 years in prison. And we actually covered his story earlier this month. What can you tell us about him and the other men living in the exoneries house? Isaiah is a very wise person. And he, he's, you know, very strict in his, you know, Islam. You know, he prays, you know, five times a day. And that's what, you know, has been keeping him. And he got out and he fought cancer and he won that battle. It was cancer in his throat. Uh, he won the battle, then he won the battle of his case. But, but now he's trying to win that battle of a, a, a real life again you know, uh, mm -hmm. his, his health, you know, he's 80, 84, 84 years old. And, and when you're that old, you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's your time is a coming, but shouldn't he be able to now benefit all of, you know, we're an American, we're all Americans. Shouldn't he be reaping those benefits, you know, of what America has to offer, you know, for his last days as all the seniors, you know, this a normal senior would. I think he can. Well, Raymond Toller. He, he has, that's that's well, what we, I want to see for him. Oh, well, Raymond, we got to go, but I, I, we want to wish you continued success, and we want to thank you for all the work that you're doing. You're really giving people a real shot at life.